At this point in our story of the electron, we've talked about how the electrons are arranged within an individual atom. We've talked a little bit about the consequences of this for bonding. So how do metals and nonmetals combine ionically? How do uh, nonmetals combine covalently? We started to talk about Lewis structures with the idea that we want to know how two molecules interact with one another. In order to know how two molecules interact, we need to understand how their atoms are arranged in three dimensions. For this, we turn to hybrid orbital theory. Hybrid orbital theory uh, covers how the atomic orbitals recombine when a molecule is formed, when we have a covalent bond, and uh, how these valence shell electron pairs create the most possible shape in three space in three dimensions from one another. This is what will give a molecule its shape. So in the Lewis structure, we see how atoms are connected to each other. Where are their bonds? Where are their non-bonding pairs? And we always remember that rule of two electrons occurring in pairs, either as a bond or as a non-bonding pair. But a Lewis structure is a flat representation of the molecule. It doesn't give us enough information to see what it looks like in three dimensions. Now, in three dimensions, since electron pairs, naturally being negatively charged, are going to repel each other, we need to get as much space between these electron pairs as possible. These pairs, bonding and non-bonding, are what we call electron domains. So we look at a single atom in the molecule and look how these electron domains are arranged around it. We don't directly measure what's going on. This is a mathematical model. Uh, and it does a very good job at explaining where the atoms are. Some of the why, there's still modern research going on into why do the electrons actually arrange the way they do, but hybrid orbital theory is very good at predicting the actual shapes of molecules, and that's why we use it. The simplest of the hybrids, an overlap of an S and P orbital to form two sigma bonds, is the SP hybrid. It results in a linear geometry, 180 degrees between the two atoms bonded to the central atom. In an sp2 hybrid geometry, we're now having three hybrid orbitals, three sigma bonds. And that still gives us a planar arrangement. Uh, this is called a trigonal planar, trigonal from the triangle shape that you see here and the bonds are 120 degrees apart. Now, there's a variation on this. We can see uh, in something like boron trihydride, BH3, we see a boron with three single bonds to hydrogens, and we see the traditional trigonal planar arrangement. Now, it's also possible to have two bonds and a non-bonding pair as an SO2, and then that sulfur has still three electron domains around it, two sigma bonds and a non-bonding pair. There is the double bond, the pi bond, and there is some resonance structure. Uh, that's a topic for a different talk. But we still have that triangular arrangement of the electron domains, but one of them is occupied by a non-bonding pair, and so the atoms themselves are in a bent shape, kind of like a chevron. Now if we go add another electron domain, so we have four domains. This involves a hybridization between an S and 3P orbitals, so we call it SP3. And three very sick molecules that have this domain pattern are methane, ammonia, and water. The difference is in the number of non-bonding pairs. So in methane, we can see all four of the hybrid orbitals are involved in bonds. Electron domains are tetrahedral, and we do still get this four-sided shape for the molecular shape. 
Now, if we look at ammonia, though, one of the bonds has been replaced by a non-bonding pair. So we have nitrogen, single bonds to three hydrogens. That's three sigma bonds and a lone pair. So we still need four electron domains, four hybrid orbitals. And so that domain shape is tetrahedral, but the shape of the molecule itself is, is, is a little squished because we only have the three points and the central atom, and we call the shape trigonal pyramidal. If we look at water, you can see in the lowest structure for water, the oxygen, the central atom here, has two non-bonding pairs. And this looks very much like the SO2 shape. The angle's a little different. Um, but this is a bent shape. And we'll mention that the angles in these pictures are, are kind of idealized geometric angles. They don't actually account for propulsion with electron pairs being slightly greater. So the angle in water really isn't exactly 109 and a half. It's really a bit smaller. But again, four electron domains, tetrahedral arrangement of those, and a bent geometry for the molecule overall. Now, the SP, SP2, SP3 hybrids are the most common in organic molecules, but there are some additional hybridizations. I'll talk about the next two, the SP3D, SP3D2 hybridizations. Um, there are hybridizations uh, with more bonds. They're even more esoteric and less common. So if we add a fifth electron domain, the SP3D hybrids. So here are some examples. So if we look at PF5, five domains all involved in bonds, and we see this in plane 120 degree shape that looks a lot like the trigonal planar, and the two out of plane uh, bonds at 90 degrees to the plane. This is a trigonal bipyramidal. Two pyramids, one going up, one going down, both with triangular base. Now, if we look at SF4, sulfur tetrafluoride, the sulfur atom actually gets a non-bonding pair and four bonds. So what we actually see is something that looks a little like it's sea salt. The two atoms uh, form a base, and then we have a sort of linear piece to the molecule. Looks a little like a teeter-totter or a sea salt. If we have a second non-bonding domain, like, like bromine trifluoride here, we can see the two non-bonding pairs leave the other three atoms looking an awful lot like a K with 90 degrees uh, between them. The non-bonding pairs are in plane, and so we get a T shape here. If we go to the triiodide ion, I3 minus, we get three non-bonding pairs in the plane, and the iodines actually form a linear shape again. Now, if we go to six electron domains, that's the sp3d2 hybrids, six hybrid orbital domains involved in the bonding. SF6 is an example, and we can see in SF6 that we have 90 degrees among all of the atoms. This is what we call an octahedral shape. If we go to bromine pentafluoride, we have a non-bonding domain on the fluorine, and we have something that looks very much like a pyramid, square base, so this is called square pyramidal. If we look at xenon tetrafluoride, we now have two non-bonding domains, and we get a square uh, shape this time in a plane, though, and so we call this square planar. All of the bond, all the bonds are 90 degrees apart in this picture. Uh, less common are the T-shaped or linear uh, sp3d2 uh, molecules, and that concludes our discussion of hybrid orbitals and the shapes that are generated as we look at the connections between bonded atoms uh, and the electron domains around them, uh, taking into account non-bonding pairs and how they affect the shape of the overall molecule.